Percy looked at his friends. Any idea what Terminius was talking about? Watch out for political something or another? Paul Liberties. Hazel sounded out the name carefully. Never mind him. Sounds Greek, Frank said. Uh, that narrows it down, Percy sighed. Well, we'll probably just appear it on the smell radar for every monster within five miles. We better get moving. It took them two hours to reach the docks in Almedia. Compared to Percy's last few months, the trip was easy. No monsters attacked. Nobody looked at Percy like he was a homeless child. Frank had sorted his spear, bow, and quiver in a long bag made for skis. Hazel's cavalry sword was wrapped up in a bedroll slung on her back. Together, the three of them looked like normal high schoolers on their way to an overnight trip. They walked to Rockridge Station, bought their tickets with mortal money, and hopped onto the BART train. They got off in Oakland. They had to walk through some rough neighborhoods, but nobody bothered them. Whenever the local gang members came close enough to look in Percy's eyes, they veered away quickly. He preferred his wolf stare over the last few months. He actually perfected it. A look that said, however bad you think you are, I'm worse. After strangling sea monsters and running over gorgons in a police car, Percy wasn't scared of gangs. Pretty much nothing in the mortal world scared him anymore. In the late afternoon, they made it to the Almedia docks. Percy looked out over San Francisco Bay and breathed in the salty sea air. Immediately, he felt better. This was his father's domain. Whatever they faced, he'd have the upper hand as long as they were at sea. Dozens of boats were moored at the docks, everything from 50-foot yachts to 10-foot fishing boats. He scanned the slips for some sort of magic vessel, a chimney maybe, or a dragon-headed warship like he'd seen in his dreams. Ah, uh, you guys know what you're looking for. Hazel and Frank shook their heads. I didn't even know they had a navy. Hazel sounded as if she wished there wasn't one. Oh, Frank said, you don't think? At the end of the dock was a tiny boat, like a dinghy, covered in purple tarp. Embroidered in faded gold along the canvas was S-P-Q-R. Percy's confidence wavered. No way! He uncovered the boat, his hands working the knots like he'd been doing it his whole life. Under the tarp was an old steel rowboat with no oars. The boat had been painted dark blue at one point, but the hull was so crusted with tar and salt, it looked like one massive nautical bruise. On the bow, the name Pax was still readable, lettered in gold. Painted eyes drooped sadly at the water level, as if the boat were about to fall asleep. On board were two benches, some steel wool, and an old cooler, and a mound of frayed rope with one end tied to the mooring. At the bottom of the boat, a plastic bag had two empty Coke cans floating several inches of scummy water. Behold, Frank said, a mighty Roman navy. There's got to be a mistake, Hazel said. This is a piece of junk. Percy imagined Octavian laughing at them, but he decided not to let it get him down. The Pax was still a boat. He jumped aboard and the hull hummed under his feet, responding to his presence. He gathered up the garbage in the cooler and put it on the dock. He willed the scummy water to flow out over the sides of the boat. Then he pointed at the steel wool and it flew across the floor, scrubbing and polishing so fast the steel began to smoke. When it was done, the boat was clean. Percy pointed at the rope, and it untied itself from the dock. No oars, but that still didn't matter. Percy could tell the boat was ready to move, just waiting for his command. This'll do, he said. Hop in. Hazel and Frank looked a little stunned, but they climbed aboard. Hazel seemed especially nervous. When they'd settled on the seats, Percy concentrated, and the boat slipped away from the dock. Juno was right, you know, the sleepy voice of Gaia whispered in Percy's mind startling him so badly the boat rocked. You could have chosen a new life in the sea. You would have been safe from me there. Now it's too late. You chose pain and misery. You're part of my plan now. My important little pawn. Get off my ship, Percy growled. Um, what? Frank asked. Percy waited, but the voice of Gaia was silent. Nothing, he said. Let's see what this robo can do. He turned the boat north, and in no time they were speeding along at 15 knots, heading towards the Golden Gate Bridge.